Hi. Now in this video tutorial what I want to do is show you how we can take two complex numbers say Z1 and Z2 and combine them in various ways like for instance by adding them, subtracting them, multiplying them together and by the end of this tutorial you should be able to do this short exercise here. But if you're fairly familiar with this kind of work and just want to do a bit of revision you might want to try these and then fast forward to the end of the video where I give you the work solutions to them. Okay so uh, let's just start by showing you how we can add say two complex numbers. So if we've got z1 equals 3 plus 2i and z2 equals 4 minus 3i then first of all then if we were to do say z1 plus z2 then we've got 3 plus 2i plus 4 minus 3i and what we do is we add together the real values that would be the 3 and the 4 and then add together the imaginary values the 2i and the minus 3i. So what we're going to get then is 3 plus 4 is 7 and then 2i minus 3i well that's going to give you minus i. So you've got 7 minus i. And if it came to subtracting them let's put this as the second example z1 minus z2 what would we have now? Well again it's just going to be 3 plus 2i minus and then 4 minus 3i. So we end up with 3 minus the 4 which is minus 1 and then 2i minus minus the 3i becomes plus 5i. And we don't tend to write the positive term first. The, we, don't, we don't tend to write this as 5i minus 1. We always write the real part first, whether it's positive or negative. So it's not a good idea to turn this around, OK? So just leave it like that. In the example 3, you can multiply a complex number by another number, a scalar quantity. Like, for instance, 5 times z1. 5 times z1 then will just be 5 multiplied by 3 plus 2i. And what you do is you just do 5 times the real value, that's going to be 15, and 5 times the imaginary value, so that's going to be plus 10i. 15 plus 10i then. And in part 4 here, you're going to find that you're going to come across things like i squared i squared, what's that going to be? Well we know that i is the square root of minus 1. So we've got the square root of minus 1 multiplied by the square root of minus 1. And this is going to give us simply minus 1. Alright? And we'll find that we'll be using this then in questions like this. For number 5, suppose we had to multiply z1 with z2. Then we've got 3 plus 2i being multiplied by 4 minus 3i. And to do this, we multiply out the brackets in the normal way. We start with the 3. 3 times the 4 is 12. And then you've got 3 times minus 3i, which is minus 9i and then plus 2i times the 4 is plus 8i and then here we've got plus 2i times minus 3i so that's going to be minus 6i squared. Now we can group together the minus 9i and the plus 8i that's going to be minus i so we've got 12 minus i and then we've got minus 6 times i squared. But what is i squared? Well i squared, we just worked out down here, is minus 1. So we've got 12 plus the 6 here which is clearly going to be 18 and then minus the i, so 18 minus i. Okay well hopefully that's given you an idea then how we can add, subtract, multiply by a scalar 
and multiply two complex numbers together. Now, I've got this short exercise here that you might like to try. Got to work out what i cubed is, i to the power 4, 2i to the power 8 minus 3i all squared. And then in this number 4, you've got 3 minus 2i all to the power 4. And with this 4, you can either do it the long way, which is to write out the four brackets and expand them, or, as you'll see me do in the work solutions, use the binomial expansion. It's a lot quicker. I would definitely encourage you though to have a go at number four. All right, because it brings together a lot of these ideas here. Okay, well, you might like to pause the video, have a go at these, and come back when ready, and we'll run through the work solutions. So, welcome back if you had a go at these. Let's see how you got on. Well, first of all then, I cubed. How are you going to do that? Well, what you'd need to do is think of this then as, say, I multiplied by I squared. And we know that I squared is minus 1. The root of minus 1 times the root of minus 1, that's minus 1. So we end up with minus I. And when it comes to number 2, I to the power 4, well, we can think of this, say, as I squared, all squared. I squared, we know then, is minus 1, and so we've got minus 1, all squared, which is clearly going to be 1. You could do, I suppose, I cubed times I. I cubed, we've seen, is minus I, and if you times that with another I, you're going to get minus minus 1, which is going to be one, right? As for three, two i to the power eight minus three i all squared. Well, we've got the two, and i to the power eight I would see as say i to the power four all squared. And then we've got minus three i all squared. Well, if we square the three, we've got the nine and then that's going to be multiplied by i squared. So we've got 9i squared there. What is i to the power 4? Well, we've just seen that it's 1. So we've got 2 times 1 squared. In other words, just simply 2. And for this, we've got the minus 9 being multiplied by i squared. i squared is simply minus 1. So minus 9 times minus 1 is plus 9, and that's going to give us 11. Now number 4, this is the one that I was particularly interested in, because it's going to bring together a lot of ideas. And I'm going to do it by the binomial expansion. And if you're unfamiliar with the binomial expansion, just go back on my website and look under the binomial expansion. But I'm assuming that you're familiar with this. And I'm going to do it by the combinations method. So what we have is, first of all, 4c0. And then we take the first term, in this case 3, and raise it to the power 4. And then we take the second term, minus 2i, and that is to the power 0. Then for the next term, it's 4c1. Take the first term reduce it by 1 in the power, so that's now to the power 3. Take the second term, minus 2i, and increase that by 1 power. So that's now up to the power 1. Next term, 4c2. Drop the power of the 3 by 1, so that's 3 squared. Increase the other one by 1, so that's now up to the power 2. Start again for the next term, 4c3. Reduce the power 3 by 1, so it's 3 to the power 1, and then we've got minus 2i. Increase that now by 1, that's the power 3. And for the last term, we've got 4c4, 3 to the power 0, and minus 2i to the power 4. Now, normally I'd go straight to the answer now, 
but what I'm going to do is put in another line where I just break down all the various parts just so that you can see what's happening. So 4C0 is 1, 3 to the power 4, well that's going to be 81, and anything to the power 0, well that's going to be 1. When we come on to the next term, 4C1 is 4, 3 cubed is going to be 27. Now when we get this one, this is going to be minus 2i to the power 1, this is going to be minus 2i. For the next term, we've got 4C2, which is 6. 3 squared, we know, is 9. And then when we get the minus 2i squared, well, minus 2, if you were to square it, is going to be 4. And then i, if you square that, is minus 1. Now when we have 4C3, that's 4. 3 to the power 1, well, that's 3. And now for minus 2i all cubed, we've got the minus 2, if you were to cube that, is minus 8. And then you've got i that is cubed. And if you cube i, we've seen that that result is minus i. So we've got minus i there. And then plus 4c4, well that's 1. 3 to the power naught, that's another 1. Then you've got minus 2 to the power 4, which is going to be 16. And then you've got i to the power 4. And i to the power 4, we saw earlier, was 1. So that's times 1. So if we were to clean up each of these terms now, what you end up with is 81. And then this one is minus... 216i and then for the next term you've got a minus and that is 216 for this term here it's going to be plus plus 96i and then for the last term it'll be plus 16 so you've got to take care over those terms very easy to get caught out on the signs OK, just group together the real values, 81 minus 216 plus 16, well that gives us minus 119. And for the imaginary parts, minus 216i plus 96i, well that gives us minus 120i. So, I hope you got that, OK? But uh, you could do it the long-winded way by, as I say, expanding four brackets, but I prefer the binomial expansion for something like this. Alright? Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial. I hope that's given you some idea. And in the next tutorial, what I'm going to introduce you to is how we go about dividing complex numbers. Alright? And evolve something called the complex conjugate. Okay, well, as I say, that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial. And I hope you found it of some value.